you know, at the risk of sounding trite, that having a team is extremely important to our success. Southeast Asia is a large region with many different jurisdictions. And there are many different legal systems and jurisprudence. And the matters we do are large, diverse, and complex. And our ability to cover the region and stay committed to providing the best legal services to our clients would not be possible without the firm's commitment, or rather the team's commitment, and hard work to our vision of success in the region. Well, it, it's a, a regional practice, really. Um, we work for a, a number of major international clients, chiefly contractors, but not exclusively. Of course, we have a practice uh, around our hub, which is Singapore, uh, doing uh, supporting clients involved in doing infrastructure projects there, government projects and private sector projects. But a significant amount of our work is in the Southeast Asia region and beyond. So places like Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, the Philippines, um, all the places where there are big ongoing infrastructure projects, often happening across borders with supply chains that, that, that go across different borders, where you've got different uh, choices of law and um, uh, challenges uh, uh, like that. Well, I think a lot of firms talk about regional and global footprint, but we really have that. We've got over 150 construction lawyers working in over 50 offices around the world. Looking at this region, we've got a presence in all the major hubs, but I think that's probably the easy bit, having the footprint. I think what really differentiates us is the strength and depth and breadth of our experience in this region, advising on some of the biggest projects, uh, in all different um, sectors, different jurisdictions, usually complex, often multi-jurisdictional, often dealing with local law issues, different institutional rules, and addressing all kinds of engineering, delay and disruption, um, and other technical disputes. Just focusing on the environmental aspect, I think the biggest story by far is the shift to renewable energy, and that's already having a massive impact on our clients, on the types of project which we're advising on. But I'd also say that away from energy uh, in other sectors, including the built environment, for example, there's also a massive shift towards technology, a focus uh, on modularization, smart cities, other new technology, which all comes under that environmental agenda, um, and which is really already shaping our practice, uh, and certainly going to um, even more, I think, in, in the next 12 months. Absolutely. Um, I think, generally speaking, law firms haven't been at the forefront of embracing change, but um, uh, things are moving. Things have moved uh, particularly uh, in, in the last year or so with the pandemic. Uh, and I think one of the, one of the key changes is, is the fact that we have got much better at working remotely and working with teams that are spread across different geographies. So I think that the two big changes uh, that, have, uh, that have happened are really around bringing people from different teams, different disciplines and uh, different geographies to work so that we're able to, to, to put the right team forward for each project that we work on. And secondly, really capturing our expertise. There's no point in being uh, one of the largest law firms in the, work, in the world if you can't capture the skill and the knowledge that you have within that firm to bring to bear on an individual project. So we're putting together um, uh, things like a litigation toolkit where we're capturing 
uh, drafts and, and uh, expertise uh, in relation to issues that come up in relation to working in different jurisdictions, so that we're able not to reinvent the wheel every time we do something, we're able to bring uh, the work that we've done previously to bear on individual cases, which means we're able to do a better job for our clients and a cheaper job. Well, one of the things that I'm quite proud of, of our practice in, in Singapore is our ability to provide cradle to grave solutions for our clients. And in this case, we were able to utilize on our knowledge of the industry uh, to provide and structure the financing and contract documents for our clients so that they had a one-stop solution. Uh, and that gave our clients a competitive edge over the other bidders for the project. And the measure of our success is not the fact that our client won the bid, but also that he used the same structure uh, to win further projects. And I think that's the value that we are able to bring to our client in understanding their business and structuring a solution for them. Yes, massively. It's very rare that we're just hired guns to look at a very narrow legal issue. Clients want strategic advice from their lawyers, uh, which looks at the bigger picture and commercial advice, which goes far beyond often narrow legal issues. What is the best way out of this problem? How do we resolve this issue? And I think increasingly clients want not only advisors to guide them, but really partners to work with them effectively become part of their team and also work closely with their other advisors. The answer to your question is it's about walking the walk and not just talking the talk. Um, and the way that you make yourself a law firm which brings, gets the best out of the talent that it has, uh, the, the, the diverse and, uh, uh, and has a diverse and inclusive workforce, is to listen to that workforce and to listen to people um, who, uh, from right across the workforce, regardless of, of what racial group, sexual group, or whatever they, they come from, as to how uh, to, to go about best uh, in, includes, uh, including them in the teams that, that you work. Now, we've made great strides. Uh, this year, I was very pleased that we uh, elected our first female senior partner, and she is already making a great uh, difference to the way that we run our firm. Um, but there's still further to go, uh, and we can't be complacent about that. At the moment, I'm conscious that you are interviewing three male partners who head uh, the projects and construction practice that we have in Southeast Asia. I would hope that if we have another interview next year, uh, if, if we hope, uh, if we're nominated again, that that situation will change as we go, as we go forward. Well, there are many lessons that I, I could share with young aspiring lawyers, but for the purposes of this session, I'll just share two. The first is that we are all students of law and the law is a continuous journey of learning. And therefore, we should always be open to learning opportunities. The second is that law does not exist in a vacuum. Uh, when clients come to us to deal with their uh, concerns, you know, it's important to understand what those issues are and what's important to client and to provide practical solutions. Uh, and that's the lessons that I would share with uh, all the young aspiring lawyers out there.